Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a weird and wacky Wednesday. It's Halloween, Heidi. It is Halloween. I love Halloween. I know you do. That's why she wears this costume in here. <laughs> Wait, that's not a costume? I absolutely I'm love all of I'm just teasing. It's hey, my favorite. Thank you for listening today. We have a super awesome guest we're going to be talking to today. Eric J. Dolan. Had to look at the book. Black Flags, Blue Waters. It's a winning Wednesday. We're giving away this book. Going to talk about pirates. Arr! It's a good day to do that because I bet sure. there's going to be some people dressed up like pirates today. Maybe. So uh, it's a great winning Wednesday. Also going to talk about the best candy to give for Halloween. So if you haven't picked your candy out yet, we got the top 10 bestest evers coming up. I don't know if I said all I that actually one. haven't done that yet, so I should probably go do that. So be listening because that's on the way. Okay. Thank you for listening. Uh, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up on this Wednesday, this winning Wednesday edition of the John and Heidi Show. If you have a dog, listen to this. Freshpatch.com is a subscription service that will send you a box with a fresh patch of grass for your dog to use for a few weeks. Then they send you a new fresh patch and you discard the old one. You can throw it in the trash, use it for compost, or even put it in your yard and it'll grow into the ground. Freshpatch.com has thousands of happy dog families who love this concept, especially in the colder months. Try it now for a little less. Use promo code radio to save 10%. That's freshpatch.com, promo code radio. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Wednesday, October the 31st. It's a spooky Halloween. But in addition to that, it's National Doorbell Day. A lot of people will be dinging the doorbells today. Yes, they will. It's also National Carameled Apple Day. It's probably not a good thing to give for Halloween anymore. No, it's not. But I think that's what they did back in the day. I do love them. National Knock Knock Jokes Day. You have any good at knock knock jokes that you could tell on the radio? No. Okay. I, I didn't think so. National Magic Day and Girl Scout Founders Day. All of these things we celebrate on this, the 31st day. It's almost November. Holy cow. The 31st day of October. Radio. It's a pretty amazing marketing tool. But like many tools, it works best when used properly. Like, let's take this weed whacker. I could use this to trim my hair. (laughs) Yikes. Hope that grows back. But that's not what weed whackers are for. Tools work much better when you use them for their proper use, just like radio. If you want help making radio work better for your business, that's our business. RadioReallyWorks.com. Get better results with the money you're already spending. RadioReallyWorks.com. Coming up, we got your brain on drugs. Usually at this time we do, is it a golf course or is it a rehab? But I got something different today. Since it is Halloween, we're going to talk about this. Halloween star, Jamie Lee Curtis, revealed that she secretly battled an opioid addiction for about 20 years. Did you know that? Wow. Yeah, that's tough stuff. I actually just scheduled an interview with a guest. We're going to be talking about opioid addictions and the difficult times that people have with that. And uh, I'm I'm really excited to visit with this person. Uh, I'm looking at my pile of notes here. I don't have the notes. I feel really bad. Those things can absolutely destroy you. I know I've got it in the notes, but it's coming up in November. So we'll be chatting with somebody here like in a week or two. But again, Halloween star Jamie Lee Curtis said, hey, I had an opioid addiction for almost 20 years. So... It's a tough thing, and if that's something you're struggling with, again, uh, there are people out there that would love to help. If you'd like to look to see if maybe they can help, uh, timeforrehab.com is a site. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on Halloween. We're getting to the time of year where we start planning for holiday parties and other events that often include alcohol. I encourage you to have some alcohol-free options as well. And if you are drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to connect you with someone who can be there for you or that loved one. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, we're here for you. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. And this is your brain on drugs. And I've been saving this one for a couple of, well, it's like a week now because uh, this happened, when was this? I don't know, like a week and a half ago. But I saved it for Halloween, Heidi. Police in Salem, Massachusetts. You know where that is, right? It's where they had the... uh, Yeah, the Salem witch hunts. Yeah, yeah. So Salem, Massachusetts. A man hit another man over the head with a witch's cauldron near a local (sighs) witchcraft store. Salem police were on patrol at about 11.30 p.m. Uh, It says here the victim... Was bleeding from the head. He ran up to the officers, said he was attacked by another man. The authorities say the two men had been inside a cottage behind a store that sells witchcraft-related items. (laughs) The decorative cauldron and candle containers. Anyway, the 35-year-old Corey Nelson was inside the cottage, stumbling around, smelling of booze. Mm. Nelson said he was was arrested. 
Uh, Nelson was arrested, rather, and pled not guilty to a charge of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. His arraignment was on Monday, probably of last week. This was like a week ago. The victim suffered a cut to his head, but refused medical attention at the scene. So, bizarre story, and I thought that's probably a good story. A good one for Halloween. For Halloween, yeah. That is so that bizarre. That is so bizarre. And that is what happens when your brain, even at a witchcraft store, is on <laughs> drugs. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, Kristen Bell said that uh, she's taken a lot of heat for her comments. She said that she wouldn't let her daughters watch Snow White because of the kiss. And she said it sends a bad yes. message to girls about consent. And I understand what she's saying. I definitely understand what she's saying. But that's also a good opportunity to have a conversation with your child as well. So, you know, instead of avoiding it, maybe you say, hey, I just want to let you know that's not a good thing to do. If you come, Boys, if you come across some uh, woman in the woods, don't kiss her. <laughs> I don't that's understand. That's the most ridiculous. But it is the most ridiculous argument. This- I know what she's talking about, but isn't that, now that you think about it, isn't the premise of that kind of bizarre? It is extremely (laughs) bizarre. What was the, never understood that. Jersey Shore star Mike The Situation Sorrento just began his eight-month prison sentence for tax fraud. Oh, actually, he'll begin that January of 2019. So if they know he's, why why are they saying, hey, we're going to give you some time, get your affairs in order, we'll do... Filming finishes up here. uh, (laughs) It just doesn't make sense. I don't get it. I don't know how that works. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Radio. It's a pretty amazing marketing tool. But like many tools, it works best when used properly. Like, let's take this weed whacker. I could use this to trim my hair. (laughs) Hope that grows back. But that's not what weed whackers are for. Tools work much better when you use them for their proper use, just like radio. If you want help making radio work better for your business, that's our business. RadioReallyWorks.com. Get better results with the money you're already spending. RadioReallyWorks.com. Now your scoop of the day brought to you by FreshPatch.com. Promo code RADIO. I've got for you the 10 best Halloween candies. Tonight is the night. Okay. A lot of people are going to be doling out some all kinds of goodies I have to go Halloween. buy mine today, so I should so, probably oh, find out what attention. I should be getting. Pay attention. All right. We went through the list of the worst yesterday. We have the best today. The link that's in the show notes, it goes to the same page. Both of these are on the same page. Uh, so if you want to know what the worst was or the best, it's all in the same link. Uh, number 10 of the best candy bars is a Hershey bar. Just a plain old regular milk chocolate Hershey bar. So, and they say uh, cookies and cream version disagree. is also on the list here. So there isn't much of a difference, but the original is the one that they really like. Number nine is Skittles. Skittles. And it says if you're not going to have uh, an entire big bag, even a little fun size bags will do. Uh, Sour Patch Kids is number eight on the list. I like Sour Patch Kids. I like them. I didn't But I wouldn't know. say like they're the world's best candy. No. So far, know. I'm not impressed with this list. Okay. Uh, Butterfinger is number seven. Oh, okay. Now here, now, now we're, we're talking, talking Heidi's kind of candy. Yeah. Here. It's a classic, and it's been on the list for a long, long time. And it's usually in the second half of the top ten, but for right now, it's in the, the, the bottom half. It's number seven. Number six is Nerds. That is the only time and I, I see I those. And I disagree. Why would they be... I they're, disagree. They're happy to get those for Halloween. It's just a tiny little box. I love that you get. them. Yeah, but, but that's I Halloween. wouldn't want a whole ton of them for Halloween. Okay, top five, Heidi. Top five. We got to stay on track. Top five. Number five is M and M's. Love that. Says uh, M and M's is uh, really good. One list actually had pretzel M and M's, which is very specific. But M and M's is in the top five mm-hmm. all the time. Agree. Have you had a pretzel M and M? I have. Have very I had good. those? Are they good? Okay, I have to. I don't remember that. Number four. This is an annual favorite, Kit Kat. Agreed. And that's always just a really popular candy. And it says uh, full size is really good, but fun size are good as well. Uh, Number three on the list of the best Halloween candies to dole out tonight, Twix. Agreed. So uh, do you do a left bar or a right bar, Heidi? Right. Oh, yeah. So I don't. They're the same, actually. (laughs) I'm just making fun of a commercial. That's probably five years old because I haven't watched TV in a while. Number two on the list is Snickers. No surprise there. I agree. Although, I love Although I would Snickers. have probably put Snickers at number one. But do you think you know what the number one answer probably is? Probably Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. It is. Yes. Number one. And this has been on the list for a long, long time. It's the number one list on... It's the number one candy on most lists. There are some that have it as low as three. And those are amazing. So uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Mm. Now, I noticed Reese's Pieces were not on the list. I like those as well, but that wasn't on the list, so... I've got a link to this story in the show notes for today. So if you want to read the top 10 best candies for Halloween, 
Uh, I've got it in the show notes at john at HeidiShow.com. Also, that same link has the top 10 worst candies. We had that list yesterday. In other news, the Center for Disease Control is asking people to not dress up their chickens for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Why is that funny? I just... That is kind of funny. Why is that funny? Apparently, that's people are looking online <laughs> for chicken costumes, not to and dress as a chicken. And what does the Center of Disease Control have to do with you dressing up your chicken? I if you know. want to dress up your chicken, it's dress not, up your chicken. It's not up to them is what you're saying? <laughs> hey, CDC, mind your own business. <laughs> what I want to do with my chicken in my own oh, backyard is my, my own gosh. thing. <laughs> and one... As far as dressing them up, <laughs> what would you what would you dress your chicken as? I would like to see a chicken dressed up like a dinosaur, mm. like a little T Rex. That'd be cute. Little arms sticking out in front. That'd be. But don't but do they it. They walk C- on those arms. CDC. So it wouldn't it? be funny. What? Their little arms that they hop around on. Their little legs. No, they, that would be the legs still. But you could put little plastic oh, arms on. Fake in front of arms. Them. Yeah, fake little arms. And one last story. A survey of parents revealed 83% of parents check their trick-or-treat candy before allowing them to eat it. 17%, you need to do that too. 83% do. So 17% don't even check. They're like, yeah, go ahead. I'm sure it's fine. So even if you're in a neighborhood where you trust everybody, you should at least look through and see and make sure it all looks okay. This has been your Scoop of the Day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on Halloween. We're getting to the time of year where we start planning for holiday parties and other events that often include alcohol. I encourage you to have some alcohol-free options as well. And if you are drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to connect you with someone who can be there for you or that loved one. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, we're here for you. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. It's a winning Wednesday, but it's also Halloween. So what in the world could we do for today? How about, oh, we'll talk to somebody who has a book called Black Flags, Blue Waters, The Epic History of America's Most Notorious Pirates. And I get to talk like a pirate because, hey, it's a, it's a book about that. So arr, we have Eric J. Dolan joining us. How are you, sir? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> Good. D- d- do you have people talk to you like a pirate all the time now? Yes. Yeah. I do, but I have to. I have to add something. I know I'm going to disappoint you and your listeners, but "arg" is not a word that any golden age pirate would have uh, used. It's uh, it's a byproduct of some movies uh, that were put out by Disney in the mid 1900s. My daughter was really disappointed when I told her that. Well, the interview uh, is already over now. Thank you so much. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) See, I've already learned something. That's awesome, Eric. Thank you. So that that was not really something they ever said. I wonder why in the world that's like the first thing I associate with pirates, but that's not even something a pirate would have said. No. uh, Well, it's it's, uh, part of a slang of, uh, in the southwestern part of England, an actor named Robert Newton who was in Treasure Island, Disney's Treasure Island in 1950, and then he was in a movie called Long John Silver, and uh, R, or, or just R without the G-H, is like a phrase like A, like Canadians use that in the southwestern part of England, and Robert Newton was this larger-than-life actor, and he added all sorts of things to the pirate vernacular, including shiver me timbers and matey, and I'm, well, matey might have been used, but as far as we know, uh, there aren't recordings back in the early 1700s, <laughs> but ARG is probably not the way that they spoke. We searched all of we searched all of the social media for every pirate, and none of them ever typed that. <laughs> so. No. <laughs> so now you've got this new book, Black Flags. Blue Waters, The Epic History of America's Most Notorious Pirates. How in the world did you decide, hey, I need to do a book on this? What is your background that made you say this is absolutely my book? Well, it it actually had very little to do with my background. I've got an undergraduate, master's, and a Ph.D. in environmental policy, but I became a writer many years ago. I found out that's the love of my life, and this is my 13th book. But the origin story for this book actually has to be traced back to my two kids, who were uh, teenagers, Harry and Lily, uh, a couple of years ago when I was looking around for another book topic after I had written this book on lighthouses called Brilliant Beacons, I decided that pirates sounded interesting. I didn't know much about them, so I pitched the idea to my kids, and they got really excited. Their eyes lit up. They said, you have to write a book about pirates, and I got really excited because neither of my kids have read any of my books. So that was really the inception of the idea. And, of course, just my kids' support is not the only reason. I started doing research into pirates, 
And I had seen a lot of movies about pirates, but I hadn't read much at all about pirates. And the more that I read, the more fascinating they became. They were really an important part of American history. And the fascinating thing to me, uh, you know, with Halloween right now, we've got uh, some of the tried and true costumes that you'll see in the stores every year for Halloween. Pirate is always right up there. I mean, it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy. It doesn't ha- matter what's happening in pop culture. You know, you got costumes that come and go, but one that's always there is Pirate. There are people that just love Pirates. Absolutely. Uh, pirates is definitely one of the top five, if not in the top one or two, of the most popular costumes for Hall- Halloween. And also, you have to remember, on uh, September 19th, uh, legions of fans across the world uh, celebrate international talk like a pirate day. Uh, It's largely because of Hollywood's influence, basically. There have been dozens of movies about pirates, and a lot of them paint them as particularly attractive, rakish rapscallions, you know, sailing the ocean with a hold full of love, uh, rum looking for love and treasure on the waves. But uh, the reality of pirates is slightly different, but there's no doubt that the concept of the pirate has taken hold of the American psyche. I have celebrated the Talk Like a Pirate Day myself in the past, and now I found out during this interview that I've been doing it all wrong. So, <laughs> no, 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 it's it's okay. I have nothing. I have nothing against all these movies that take liberties with the the facts. The only thing that I ask is they want to really find out the true history of pirates. Go beyond the movies and read some books. And of course, I would put my book on that list. Well, and it is out right now. It's called Black Flags, Blue Waters, The Epic History of America's Most Notorious Pirates. I'm going to have a link to that in our show notes to make it really easy to find if you'd like to purchase a copy. And I've got one that they sent to me. And since today is a winning Wednesday, we're going to give that away. You can learn how to win at johnandheidyshow.com. Eric, thank you again for taking the time to chat with us. Great. Thank you. Again, Eric J. Dolan, he's the author of Black Flags, Blue Waters, The Epic History of America's Most Notorious Pirates. So if you're interested in winning or if you'd like to uh, find out where you can buy a copy, I do have a link at johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. If you want to grow your business, you can add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers or a combination of both. There's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow your sales and you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Text Radio Trial to number 22828. That's Radio Trial, all one word, to number 22828. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? T-shirts, like this thing I'm wearing right here, looking all cozy and casual-like. Yes. T-shirts were originally marketed to unmarried men who didn't know how to sew buttons back on collared shirts by themselves. Oh. So in the beginning, T-shirts were just, you know, it's like how, maybe that'd be a good way for women to know that that guy's single because he's wearing a T-shirt. Yeah. Well, nowadays, kind of everybody, you know, women, men, single, married. Uh, everybody wears t-shirts so well not everybody but a lot of people do thanks for listening to our fun fact on this halloween if you have a dog listen to this freshpatch.com is a subscription service that will send you a box with a fresh patch of grass for your dog to use for a few weeks then they send you a new fresh patch and you discard the old one you can throw it in the trash use it for compost or even put it in your yard and it'll grow into the ground freshpatch.com has thousands of happy dog families who love this concept especially in the colder months try it now for a little less use promo code radio to save 10 percent. that's freshpatch.com promo code radio time now for your grandiloquent word for today it is galumph what do you think galumph means i don't know g-a-l-u-m-p-h galumph to move along in a heavy and clumsy manner. Some people will be galumphing their way around because of their costumes tonight. They'll be moving along in a heavy and clumsy manner. Galumph. It's a good word for today. It is. That, see, I've been holding these things. I've been, you know, trying to... <laughs> some of this stuff has kind of been tough because uh, it's a good word. I want to use that word, but no, I'm going to hold off. So, galumph. Today's grandiloquent word. We're getting to the time of year where we start planning for holiday parties and other events that often include alcohol. I encourage you to have some alcohol-free options as well. And if you are drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to connect you with someone who can be there for you or that loved one. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, we're here for you. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. 
Another spooky story as we get to weird news on Halloween. A rickety house fenced off from the public on Highway 55 in New Mexico has a haunting reputation. Abandoned now for over 20 years, the Estesina Board of Trustee members and former mayor, uh, Mauro Hall, said many locals say the spooky theories behind the now doorless home attract people from across the state to snap pictures with the hopes of spotting something eerie. If you drive by, sometimes you can see ghosts standing in the window, they say. Oh. Yeah. A neighbor says they're concerned about trespassers at the abandoned home, adding they often have to chase people out. They say it's kind of a ghost house. Michelle Jones, one of the neighbors, says people love it for this time of year, especially around Halloween. But how the home got to this small town is just as interesting. A local lawyer, Fred Ayers, bought the home as a kit in the 1920s through Sears and Roebuck Company. Mm. And the Sears Archives website states that the retailer sold more than 70,000 of these build-it-yourself house kits in about 450 different housing styles between 1908 and 1940. So this is a Sears catalog house, and now they say it's haunted. Ooh. Mm. Thanks for listening on Halloween. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh. And I got to say, I honestly probably don't think this is so stupid, but there are a lot of people online that are just calling this really dumb. It's called the Nightmare Burger. Ooh, Burger King. Uh, I think tomorrow is the last day you can get one. Uh, we've not had one. Our son has. He's like, eh. He, he went and got one a couple years ago when they did the black one, too. Oh, yeah. I remember the black. We've, we've done the black one before. Yeah. So it's a quarter pound beef burger topped with chicken. So you don't usually think of chicken on a burger, but chicken and cheese and bacon and onions and mayo on a green sesame seed bun. And it's, quote, clinically proven to induce nightmares. They have an ad uh, where participants are hooked up to sleeping monitors after eating one. And nightmares increase 2.5 times over your normal rate due to proteins that they have in there. Ha. Huh. One said, I remember hearing voices and people walking around and talking. Well, that's probably just the people that were doing the sleep <laughs> study. Anyway, <laughs> burger's been out since October 22nd. I don't know how many nightmares people have had since then, but today's kind of the last day for me to talk about it, so I figured I'd do that. And it sounds expensive to me. It says it's $6.39 for a burger? Doesn't that sound like a lot well, for a, for a fast food burger? I don't know. Maybe if it's not. it's a chicken breast. And, I suppose. You know, I don't know what else is I on there, but... If you'd like to know more, I've got a link to it in the show notes, and it says it's only available through November 1st. John and Heidi. If you want to grow your business, you can add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers or a combination of both. There's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow your sales and you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Text Radio Trial to number 22828. That's Radio Trial, all one word, to number 22828. John and Heidi. Time now for your... Fake news or Florida story, as we have to ask Heidi, is this something that really happened in the great state of Florida, or is it made up just to trick you? You ready for fake news or Florida? I am ready. Fake news or Florida? A Miami man was busted for shoplifting when he put a six-pack inside of his daughter's Build-A-Bear. Fake news or Florida? Fake news. That is fake news. How did you know? Because a -A Build-A-Bear wouldn't fit a six-pack. I've tried. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to do a build a bear that put her on a <laughs> bottle of wine to take with you to concerts and stuff. It's a funny oh looking. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing! It's a funny looking bear. <laughs> Got a big bottle sticking out of his back. Um, you know what? I I can't believe that somebody hasn't thought of that to have uh, some sort of little teddy bear. I've that seen. Have I've you seen, seen a baby. Oh really? It's a baby doll, and it, it, and you like just strap it on you and wear it in like one of those harness things, oh, and then you just like tilt it up and you drink out of its head <laughs> if you have one of those you might have a problem just saying coming up we have some good news thank goodness we need it so Thanks. i should cancel my order yes we yeah. need some good news and it's on the way john and heidi. this portion of the john and heidi show is brought to you by the john and heidi show that sounds kind of funny but it's true go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the john and heidi show here's the best part they can carry the show for free they play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. 
send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I'm going to let Heidi choose. You tell me which good news story, and then we're going to read that one. Uh, is it this story? Amazon is investing to make sure millions of tons of recycling gets diverted from landfills. Or is it this one? After breaking off engagement, Bride lets some good come from the, the breakup by donating a wedding to a stranger in need. Which one of those? First or second story? First one. All right. So uh, our good news comes your way courtesy of Odiva, the monthly subscription service just for the ladies. All of the details on that at radiosavings.com. As I shuffle to the right page and read the story here. Amazon, I already read the headline, I guess, so I can scroll down to this. Amazon has announced they're going to invest $10 million in a closed-loop fund to support recycling infrastructure in the United States. Their investment will increase the availability of curbside recycling for 3 million homes in communities across the country, making it easier for customers to recycle and further develop end markets for recycled commodities. The investment will divert a million tons of recycled materials from landfills into the recycling stream, and it will eliminate the equivalent of 2 million metric tons of CO2 by 2028. That's the equivalent, by the way, of shutting down an entire coal-powered plant for six months. So uh, just by saying, hey, we're going to make it easier, we're going to do this to uh, help you re- recycle all your I stuff. I guess we've never lived anywhere where recycling wasn't yeah, available. Yeah, it's always been available. It's interesting. I'll show you so the So I'm image wondering here. Where, well, I'm who sure this will benefit. A lot of people. I guarantee Can I change my mind? I want to hear the no, other story. We'll, we'll do the other one. <laughs> I'll give you a choice tomorrow, too, and maybe you'll, maybe you'll pick the right story tomorrow, Heidi. But if you look at the image here, it's interesting how many cardboard boxes are in there. And you think everything that Amazon sends out is in a cardboard box. Is in a box. cardboard box, So yeah. I think this is really a good idea for them to do this, and I'm well, really yeah. glad they're embracing this. So I've got a link to the story. It's in the good news section of our show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on Halloween. Be safe out there.